Hey what's up folks, in this project we'll show you how to build a lighter prop using Adafruit's Prop Maker. This is fully 3D printed and has a collapsible blade. It's made from segments that are tapered so it can retract. So it makes a pretty cool effect when you swing it around. All of the electronics are housed inside the 3D printed hilt. It's also got an accelerometer for motion activated sound effects. It plays different sounds for swings and hits. They are also randomized and feel pretty responsive to your motion. The blade is removable and the hilt makes a pretty sweet flashlight. Inside the emitter is an insanely bright 3 watt RGB LED. In this video we'll show you how you can build your own so get ready to do some 3D printing, electronics and programming. The code is written in CircuitPython and available to download on GitHub. It uses Adafruit CircuitPython libraries to program the hardware. With the Adafruit Feather, you can easily upload code over micro USB and recharge the battery. So if you're a prop builder looking to program lights and sounds, the Featherwing platform makes it much easier. We designed the hilt assembly with parts that snap fit and screw together. The parts are designed to house all of the electronics and it's modular so it can be taken apart. You can also download our 3D parts and use them in your projects. The parts in this kit are designed for support free 3D printing and ready to print as is. The source files feature parametric sketches and components. We're using PLA filament on an Ultimaker 3. Links to the STL and step files are in the description. The parts have pretty tight tolerances so you'll want to use your preferred slice settings. Get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. We'll start by assembling the headers on the Adafruit Feather and Prop Maker Featherwing. Insert the strip of male headers into the row of pins on the outer edge of the PCB. I like to use a breadboard to help keep the headers straight. Just be sure to line them up properly. With the headers now in place, we can solder all of the pins. If you're new to this, be sure to check out Adafruit's guide to excellent soldering. When soldering, you'll want to heat up both the pad and the lead and then add solder. Once applied, remove the solder but keep the iron still on the joint for a bit. Then you can remove the iron. Once all of the pins have been soldered, you can remove the PCB and double check to make sure they all have enough solder. Next we can install the female headers on top of the Feather Express. To help with installing the headers, we'll use the Feather Wing. Just snap it on top and this will help keep the female headers in place while we solder. I like to use a PCB vise, this helps keep it in place so it doesn't move around. The stick vise is nice because it lets you clamp it down. With the PCB secured, we can add solder to install the female headers. Once we're done soldering, remove the PCB and inspect the joints. You want to make sure there's enough solder and no cold joints. We'll use a 4 pin JST cable to connect the LED to the prop maker. Since it's an RGB LED, it'll need 4 wired connections. Third helping hands keep the PCB in place while we solder up the wires. For more grip, we put pieces of heat shrink tubing on the little grabbers. Once it's in a good spot, we can tin the pads by adding a bit of solder. You'll need to be quick about it because the aluminum backing dissipates the heat, making it a bit tricky. Next we'll plan out the wired connections before soldering to the pads. Here I'm connecting the white wire to the blue pad green wire to the green pad, red wire to the red pad, then connecting the black wire to the common anode. Be sure to check the joints, these need to be pretty solid. I did do this a couple times before getting good connections. We'll use a 2 pin JST cable to connect the toggle switch to the prop maker. 
use wire cutters to shorten the cable. We'll need these two cables for their JST connectors. We'll solder one of these JST cables to the toggle switch. Using wire strippers, remove a bit of insulation from the wires. Tin the exposed wire by adding a bit of solder. This will prevent the strands of wire from fraying. Now we can connect the cable to the leads on the toggle switch. Helping hands will keep the switch sturdy while soldering the wires. Add a bit of solder to the leads first, then we can get the wire connected. Make sure to connect the middle lead and then one of the other leads on either side. Double check your wiring and make sure the connections are solid. Next, we'll connect the other JST cable to the prop maker feather wing. I'll start by securing the PCB to the stick vise with the bottom side facing up. Add a bit of solder to tin the enable and ground pins. Now we can connect the two wires from the cable. Polarity doesn't matter as long as both pins are wired. With it connected to the enable and ground pins, the toggle switch can cut the power. The JST cable is positioned to go in between the feather and feather wing. Next, we'll connect a 4-pin JST cable to the prop maker. This will connect to the 3-watt RGB LED. I'll fit the PCB back onto the stick vise, bottom side up. Then, tin the RGB LED pads on the prop maker. We'll need to match the connections with the wiring on the 3-watt RGB LED. So double check the wired connections and make sure the joints are solid. Now we can snap the prop maker on top of the feather. Go ahead and plug in the LED and toggle switch to the prop maker using the JST cables. This mini oval speaker connects directly to the speaker port. We can also plug in the LiPo battery to the feather. Once the code is uploaded, we can test out the circuit and make sure everything works. You'll want to follow the circuit diagram and make sure the connections match. Next, we'll set up the feather and upload the code. Go to circuitpython.org and select the Feather M4 Express. We'll download the latest version of CircuitPython. Select your preferred language and download the UF2 file. Connect the micro USB cable from your computer to the feather and make sure the toggle switch is turned on. When the circuit Pi drive shows up, double click the reset button to reload it as feather boot. Now we can drag and drop the UF2 file to the feather boot drive. This installs CircuitPython and reloads as circuit Pi drive. Now we can go ahead and add the code and sound files. Just drag and drop them onto the USB drive. You can use the Moo editor to make changes to the Python code. You can read through the comments and modify the values to fit your project. You can test and debug your code using the built-in serial console. To change the color of the LED, use the variables at the top of the code. Here I'll change it from red to purple. CircuitPython makes these changes really fast so you can iterate more quickly. The code, libraries, and assets live on the USB drive so you can make these changes on any computer. We'll start the assembly by building the emitter. Join the emitter cap to the LED plate and line up the mounting holes. Then insert the brass standoffs into these holes. Now we can insert two screws into the remaining holes. Tightly fasten the lock nuts onto the threads of the screws to secure the parts. Next, we'll set up the RGB LED and battery. Insert the JST cable from the LED and pull it through the hole in the middle of the emitter. Grab the battery holder and pass it through the JST cable. Place the wires on one of the grooves. Then fit the battery through the holder. Make sure the cable is facing outside. Now we can begin to fit the battery through the top of the hilt. With the cable going in first, insert the battery holder and fit it through the hilt. You can then start to screw the emitter cap onto the hilt. 
be sure to pull the battery cable out the other end. Next we can install the mini toggle switch. Grab the cables to make room and insert the switch into the opening on the hilt. Fit the actuator through the mounting hole so it sticks out the other side. Now we can add the washer and hex nut over the stem of the switch. Grab the LED and position it so the mounting holes line up with the brass standoffs. Now we can begin to insert and fasten machine screws to secure the PCB. You can use a screwdriver bit to tightly fasten the screws. Next we'll set up the feather and prop maker with the PCB holders. This will make it easier to fit the PCBs through the hilt. These fit over the mounting holes and clip onto the edges. You'll need to install these on both ends of the PCB. Double check and make sure the tabs are lined up with the mounting holes. You can go ahead and secure them in place using M25 nylon screws. The grooves on the sides will allow this to slide through the rails inside the hilt. Next, we'll install the speaker. Start by threading the cable through the opening on the side of the hilt. Pull the cable through the bottom and keep the speaker outside the hilt. Now we can start to install the PCB holders through the hilt. Line up the grooves with the rails and push the PCBs through the bottom. Insert it about halfway through and get ready to plug in the speaker and battery. Grab the speaker cable and plug it into the speaker port. After that, gather up the remaining JST cables and plug them up. Here we're making the connections for the LED and switch. With these now plugged in, we can go ahead and connect the battery to the feather. The PCBs can now be pushed up inside the body of the hilt. And we still have access to the micro USB port. You can then grab the pommel and screw it onto the bottom of the hilt. One of the last parts to install is the speaker. Start by peeling the protective backing and then go ahead and stick it to the speaker holder. You'll need to press fit it into the holder. Now we can install the speaker holder into the hilt. The grooves on the inside of the holder wrap around the rail along the outside of the hilt. You can pull apart the clip to fit it over the hilt. Next we can set up the lens holder. Place the focusing lens over the center of the holder. Then grab the lens cover and line up the parts so they press fit. The lens cover twist locks into place. The shield covering is then installed to the outside of the lens holder. With the lens holder now assembled, we can screw it on top of the emitter. These parts have threads so they can be tightly fastened. With the emitter now put together, we can install the blade. This can be press fitted over the lens holder. The tolerances are a snug fit, but it is still removable. For a more permanent hold, you can use super glue or other adhesives. Go ahead and turn it on. Check out the light diffusion in the blade. Different types of filament will affect the light diffusion. The focusing lens contains the light and helps prevent light leaking. And there you have it. Be sure to check out the learn guide for a full list of parts, code, and files. You can also tune into our 3D Hangout live stream on Wednesdays for coupon codes. Join our Discord server and get project help or share your projects with the community. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more 3D printing projects from Adafruit.